Quick disclaimer before we get started. I am not a medical professional. Anything I share should not be taken as medical advice. I am simply sharing what I have learned through my experience of helping my mother get her blood sugar numbers under control, what I've read, and what I've seen happen with other people. So today we are going to talk about the glycemic index. Diabetics, both type 1 and type 2, are being told not to worry about checking their blood sugar, just no. scratch that. <clears throat> Type 2 diabetics are being told not to worry about checking their blood sugar. All they need to do is follow the glycemic index. This is a chart that shows how much sugar is in a whole variety of foods. And people are being told if it's low on the glycemic index, it's perfectly safe. You should be able to have it and not worry about it. So let's talk about what it actually is. Is it actually important for a diabetic and is it helpful? So the way that they came up with the glycemic index was they took pure glucose and they had a person drink it. I'm, I'm guessing it must have been a healthy person. I didn't see the entire study. I'm posting a link to where I got the information from. Um, granted, it was Wikipedia. However, this is not something that's argued. This is just how it happened. What they did was they measured the impact of pure glucose on a person over the course of two hours because it takes approximately one to two hours for someone's blood glucose to rise. So they had the person ingest pure glucose and they took readings. What they said was based on how it responded that pure glucose was 100, right? That's, that's the level. And all the foods after that are based on that. So they could test this person eating a banana, see how high it goes when they eat the banana, and how that relates to what it was like when they had the pure glucose. And then they give it a score based on that. I hope that makes sense. So the thing is, what they discovered is that it's not a straight line. So there are a lot of factors. If we just look at the food by itself... There are a lot of different factors that they had to take into account. For instance, how much fiber is in that food? How much fat and protein? Uh, was the food cooked or uncooked? How was the food cooked? How much acid or salt is in the food? Now, one of the things that they noticed is that fiber, fat, and protein all will slow the impact of blood sugar. In other words, those three things will slow down how fast your system turns that food into glucose in the system. For example, uh, if you eat an apple versus apple pie, you've got the fiber from the apple peel that will help slow it down, plus the fiber of the apple flesh itself. That will help slow things down. Uh, whereas if you have it in apple pie, it's been cooked, the fat in the apple pie might help slow it down some, but basically it's going to turn into sugar faster because there's also added sugar and there's flour. So um, all of those things will allow it to speed up and the impact will be faster and higher. There's something else to take into account though. And this is something that they admitted in the, uh, on the site that I saw. And I know that this is, this is across the board something that they have to take into account. You have to take into account the person. For instance, how tall are they? How much do they weigh? Are they a man or woman? How old are they? Do they have any metabolic damage? How much muscle do they have? How much exercise do they get? Is their liver still fully functioning? Are their hormones stable? Do they live a highly stressful life? What kind of medications are they on? So that's a pretty long list of things that would affect how the how quickly a food turns into glucose in the system. And you can see that you can't draw a straight line with this. It's not going to affect every single person the same way. If we were only looking at the factors pertaining to food, the glycemic index would probably be more helpful. If we could say, okay, 
We know for a fact that this food has plenty of fiber. Fiber will slow down this food turning into glucose. Therefore, we know that this, sh this food should be okay. However, again, we bring in people and everything changes. So I'll give you an example of beans. Beans are considered low on the glycemic index because they are high in protein, they are high in fiber, and they also have fat. Those three things should slow down the impact on a person's system. However, someone like my mom, she is a woman. She is short. She is somewhat overweight. She's got some weight left to lose. Um, she is, she's been diabetic for years now. She also has end-stage cirrhosis, which means that her liver is very, very damaged. Um, and she's going to be 70 this year. So all, taking all of those things into account, I can tell you when she has beans, and that's one of the first things that we had to get rid of because we saw what the impact was. When she has beans, it shoots her sugar right up. Now, if my daughters who are lean, they are young, they don't have metabolic damage, I guarantee if we tested their blood sugar afterwards, beans would be fine. So you have to take all of these things into account. You can't assume that looking at the glycemic index, that's just a great way to figure out if a food is good or bad for you. Let's review real quick what happens with carbs. All carbs turn into sugar or glucose in the system. That is just how it works. The best way to find out what food is going to raise your blood sugar is by testing one and a half to two hours after you eat. The reason that you don't want the number to go over 140 is because 140 is where the damage begins. Anytime it goes over, anytime your blood sugar goes over 140, damage is starting. Your feet, your kidneys, your heart, everything is affected by the high levels of blood sugar. So stop the damage, follow the information that you're learning through your blood glucose monitor. I want to give you guys a couple more examples, um, just comparing two different people. So I follow Dennis Pollock from, um, he's got a channel called Beat Diabetes. Now he's done multiple tests to see what kind of impact different foods have. And he tested bananas. And it was interesting because when he checked his blood sugar after bananas, he found that they raised his blood sugar higher than candy bars. That was a pretty interesting test. I also want to say that he's done tests where he showed he can have strawberries and they do not raise his blood sugar. My mom cannot have strawberries. They absolutely raise her blood sugar. So that's one of those factors again. Now, Dennis is a man. He's a little older than mom, but he doesn't have as much metabolic damage. So you have to take those things into account. But again, the best way to figure it out is by checking your blood sugar. Anyway, that is all for today. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.